If we're ready, I'll go ahead and start. We're ready, sir. Okay. Um, I will now call the January 5th, 2021 special meeting of the Board of Supervisors to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning. Good morning. If you give me one second, I'm going to be sharing my screen. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, good morning and welcome to the teleconference January 5th, 2021 Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors special meeting. Pursuant to the provisions of the Governor's Executive Order N2920, this meeting is being held virtually. The county welcomes the public to participate in today's meeting using the Zoom link provided on our website at www.santacruzcountyca.iqm2.com. Click on today's date and then the agenda. You will find the Zoom link there, or you may type it in as you see it here on the screen. If you wish to participate by phone, you may do so by calling 1-669-900-6833. The meeting ID is 837-1112-9200. Again, you may call one 9006833 and enter the meeting ID number 8371112929245 If you need further help logging in today's meeting you may call the clerk of the board's office at 8314542323 and someone can help you log into the meeting as always, you may watch the live stream broadcast of today's meeting through the www.santacruzcountyca.iqm2.com link, the county Facebook page, or through the community website, community TV website. I will now call the roll. Supervisor Koenig? Present. Friend? Here. Coonerty? Here. McPherson? Here. Chair Caput. Here. Chair, it's ready for you now. Okay. Uh, please join me in a moment of uh, silence or prayer, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I guess. Uh, do we need to stand? Uh, well, or we can do the pledge of well. We'll do the pledge of allegiance from where we are. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and yeah. to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any, uh, hi Carlos, uh, are there any revisions or corrections to the uh, today's agenda? Uh, Chair Caput, there are no uh, revisions to today's agenda. Okay, we'll go to item number four and we'll consider selection of a chairman uh, or vice uh, chairman for calendar year 2021 <laughs> as outlined in the memorandum of Myself. Okay. Chair, this is Supervisor Friend. Um, first, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for serving as chair over the last year. I know that this was a very challenging year for the county and it is a significant amount of additional work. And so I appreciate uh, your work over this previous year. And I just want to make sure you were acknowledged on that. Um, I'd also like to uh, welcome our new colleague, Supervisor Koenig. Uh, welcome you to the county family, and we look forward to working with you to making this county uh, an even better place. Congratulations on your victory, and we look forward to your service. Um, on this item, uh, I believe that Supervisor 
McPherson and Supervisor Koenig would make a good chair and vice chair combination. And so I would move the recommended actions, assuming that there's no public comment on the item. And I'll second those items, second that motion. That's this is Ryan Coonerty. Okay, we have a first and second. Uh, if we can hear public comment on this item, each person will have, we'll give them three minutes. I don't think there's a whole lot lined up, but uh, anyway. <clears throat> Supervisor or chair, I'm sorry. I do not see anybody raising their hand. I don't either. Yeah. I hope if you'd give me one second. We have one hand raise actually. If you would. One second. Before before we get into public comments, Chair, we're gonna I'm gonna read some directions for people so they have the opportunity to speak and understand the um, okay. way we're doing it. If you could hold on. Oops. Okay, so now is the time for public comment. If you wish to comment and are joining us through the Zoom link, please find the hand icon on the bottom of your screen and click on the icon to raise your hand. This will place you in line to speak. When it is your turn to speak, I will call you by name and you will see a pop-up on your screen asking if you want to accept being unmuted. Please accept this and start speaking. Once you start, the timer will start. If you are calling from the phone, please dial star nine now. This will virtually raise your hand. I will identify you by your last four digits of your phone number. When you hear me say the last four digits, please dial star six. This will unmute yourself. Only dial this once. If you dial it a second time, you will remute yourself. Once you dial star six, you may start speaking speaking and the timer will start when you begin. You will hear a beep at the one minute warning and again when your time is up. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this slide up with all the pertinent information in case people are joining us late. <clears throat> Okay, speaker, Monica McGuire, you have three minutes to speak. I am unmuting you. Please accept the unmute and start speaking. The timer will begin when you start. Okay, yeah, hi there. Thank you so much. Um, very interesting new world of all this. Good morning and uh, the number one reason I decided to raise my hand was I had trouble getting on. I'm sure there's other people that are having trouble getting on, and I didn't want the moment to pass without the opportunity for the public to say welcome to Manu Koenig and to the new 2021, um, where we have this bright, bright, beautiful morning to tell us that we have the chance to do something wonderful and amazing for our county together. And I deeply appreciate that you were able to see my hand raised and I'm surprised if there aren't others because I'm sure other people are trying to join in as so many people care deeply about what's going on in this county and what we can do to make this a safe and healthy place to live on every possible level, especially with the freedoms and the needs to move forward uh, as human beings and as in dignity in, um, in the aspects of what's going on of choices that don't make sense and choices that are very difficult and that we wish to assist and join in our county with. So um, thank you for hearing me. I, I think it's not the time to say much else except I hope other people are hearing something and finding a way to put their hand up if they wish to speak and that this is working on every level. 
thank you so much and blessings, blessings, Manu, on being a new member with so many beautiful, wonderful people thrilled that you are a new voice, a new heart, a new mind for this new year and uh, the future that we're hoping to help you build for us. Thank you so much. The next speaker is Carol Bajorn. You have three minutes to speak. I am unmuting you. Please accept the unmute and start speaking. The timer will begin when you start. Good morning. Um, this is Carol Bjorn, and I wanted to express my congratulations to Manu. I'm looking forward to working with you on the board. I um, also wanted to say, um, just echo the comments that Monica made. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you on the board this year. And I would just wanna urge everybody to be um, really listening and really asking questions. Um, one of the things that I have taken away from the past year was um, things that appear a certain way may not always be true. And I've asked a lot of questions this year and I found answers I really didn't expect to get. And I think that that's probably true with a lot of things. And so I would just urge everyone to be very curious, um, to follow your curiosity, investigate things that you may have been very set in your in the way you think about something, but perhaps there's a different way of looking at it. Perhaps there's a new way of looking at it that you may have not ever considered before. And, and just by looking at it might open up lots of new possibilities um, not only for you in a personal capacity, but for our community at large. I think really now is the time, especially with the new year, to look at things differently. Um, it's my, my personal opinion. I, I think a lot of our, our governmental policies haven't worked as well as we had hoped. And I think that was really highlighted in the past year. So it's really time to follow curiosity you know, ask questions and find out, is this really working? Is this really the kind of community we wanna create or can we create something different? So I would just urge everyone to look at things differently, ask questions, be open um, to different ways of looking at things. And, um, and again, I do look forward to working with all of you in the upcoming year. And I, I would urge, you know, the in-person um, meetings, I think they're very important. Um, if, and if you're not going to do that, at the very least, let's show the faces of the speakers. Um, that way we do create more community connection. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next is person is a phone caller. If your phone number ends in 1999, you have three minutes to speak. I am unmuting you. Please accept the unmute by dialing star six and start speaking. The timer will begin when you start. Good morning. My name is James Ewing Whitman. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Excellent. So I don't have much to add right now, but I appreciate the public comments. An observation I would like to make is on other Zoom calls, and let's say I prefer not to do Zoom, but do a telephone call, there's several telephone numbers. So my observation is Hopefully, the one telephone number given has an unlimited amount for people to participate. Um, I'll make public comments, but thank you all. Happy New Year. Thank you. I do not see any more hands raised. So that is the end of public comment for this item. Okay, we'll uh, bring it back to the board for uh, a vote on the selection of chairman and vice chairman. I'll call for a vote. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Chair Caput? Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, Bruce, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, all your service, Mr. Uh, former Chair Caput. You did a terrific job during a very uh, difficult year. I'd like to make just a, com a few comments. I want to uh, thank uh, the team, the IT team that's put this together uh, for us to go on virtual uh, throughout uh, for the future. Do we otherwise? Uh, I want to just say thank you to uh, 
for the patients, for the public and all. Uh, we will have our first uh, regular meeting on uh, on the 12th of January. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And I'd just like to make a couple of comments before we get on to the one item we're gonna be discussing. As we know that uh, 2020 was an unprecedented year with two crises at once, uh, added to uh, the, the homeless, ongoing homeless issue we have, along with other, every other community in this state. Um, we have been managing an epidemic amid a catastrophic, catastrophic fire. Uh, this challenges in ways unseen and unexpected, unlike I've ever seen in my more than 20 years of public service. Yet our county team rose to the occasion uh, despite the budget cuts, furloughs, and we will continue to do so in 2021 to the best of our abilities. And believe me, I think the ability of our staff, our county staff is outstanding. What they have been done and the challenges they faced in 2020, and we're gonna face them as we go on. Um, I have every confidence that this board will also rise to the occasion and work together to set uh, good policy on behalf of our residents. Uh, we really face some uh, unprecedented challenges in housing, transportation, homelessness, and public health, just to name a few. Um, it will take all of us to identify solutions, and we will need to do it with challenges on our budget that are impacting us as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I want to thank San Supervisor Caput again uh, for his uh, service as year's chair, and congratulations once again to our incoming supervisor, Manu Koenig. It's nice to have you here. And I want to thank the CEO, uh, Carlos Palacios, and his team, and all of our county employees for their service this past year and in the year to come. I can tell you that um, the break that we have had has not been a break for county supervisors and county staff. They have been working overtime, and uh, I, can't, I can't overemphasize how proud I am of the work of our county employees and what they have done whether it be at a hospital or uh, in the cleanup of the after the fire, whatever it might be, uh, you have done an outstanding job. And this goes to our special districts and our other districts that uh, we have in Santa Cruz County. I'd just like to say thank you again uh, for the opportunity to serve as chair at this year, 2021. And I know we're gonna make progress in many ways. We're gonna, it's gonna be partly come back it's going to be a lot of advancement at the same time. Believe me, uh, I know that our dedicated staff will do all it can do to make this as convenient as possible for the people of Santa Cruz County. So I thank you for this opportunity to serve you as chair of the Board of Supervisors in 2021. And uh, with that, I think we can go on to the next item. I appreciate your patience and let, let uh, me have a a little uh, spiel here. We'll go on to item number five, to consider the adoption of a resolution extending for 30 days the proclamation of a local emergency by the county administrative officer and declaration of a local health emergency by the county health officer related to the CZU August lightning complex fires and take related action as outlined in the memorandum of understanding uh, of the county administrative officer. We will have a resolution extending the local emergency and the local health emergency. Uh, so I would like to see if there's any, uh, there's a presentation by um, the CAO if he'd like to make a comment and then we'll go from there. Thank you, uh, Chair McPherson. Uh, wildfires known as the CZU August Lightning uh, Complex fires began on August 15th. These fires destroyed numerous residents and, and uh, other property resulting in evacuations and displacement of residents, road closures and damage to property and utility systems. This item extends the existing proclamation of a local emergency and declaration of a local health emergency. Uh, under government code uh, section 8630, a governing body must renew the uh, continuing local emergency at least every 30 days. Although the county is well into uh, the recovery period at this point, many of our community members remain displaced. Moreover, the danger created by the fires is still present as the county continues to move through the recovery and debris removal 
stage with Cal OES and other governmental partners. So with that, we are requesting uh, that the board approve the resolution extending uh, the local emergency, the declaration of local emergency for another uh, 30 days. And uh, I am available as well as County Council Jason Heath uh, for any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? And I'll go down by the numbers. Uh, Mr. Koenig, do you have any questions? Yes, thank you, uh, Chair McPherson. And uh, thank you to all my colleagues on the board for the warm welcome and to uh, from the members of the public. Um, and to county staff also for setting this uh, this virtual meeting up. I think it's a great uh, step in the right direction as far as our virtual meetings go. Um, and uh, I can assure you no one's looking forward more to the first in-person meeting this year than me. Um, I just, a quick question on this. Um, I was reviewing the, um, the online tool that tracks the number of properties that have been cleaned up. Uh, and it looks like about seven uh, properties uh, as of this morning had been cleared for uh, return. And um, my question is, you know, does that mean that the other, um, you know, 900, or almost a thousand homes that were destroyed, you know, we've, we've got uh, still close to that of people who are displaced. Um, and, you know, how many people are still using the facilities at the county fairgrounds um, or other temporary facilities throughout the county uh, for housing today? I'm going to see if any of our um, staff that could uh, provide a more detailed answer than I could on, on the answer to the number of people that are still displaced and the status of uh, people returning to their property. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know if Matt Machado or Lisa are on the call and they could uh, attempt to answer it, that question. Hi, Carlos. Yes, Elisa Benson here, Assistant CAO, and I'm trying to actually get my camera. Let's see, can you guys see me? see it's not letting oh well can anyone hear me we can hear you okay well I, I'm not able to click my video over good morning everyone um we no longer have anyone at the fairgrounds we we closed that facility about a month ago and we have no one um in sort of what I would say um post county sponsored um hotels we do have some survivors who are using their FEMA benefits to uh, stay in hotels as they're not, they are not yet um, able to find um, short-term housing and our team is working with them on housing options. Um, so yeah, at this point, we uh, don't have anyone, um, and we're not, we're not uh, having to sort of shelter folks at this point, but we do have ongoing support in terms of housing navigation supports and uh, helping them navigate that the housing market here, as well as mental health uh, supports or online and some case management support is in the works uh, for a little bit later in February. If I may chime in, um, this is Matt Machado, Deputy yes. CAO and Director of Public Works. Can you hear me fine? Yes. We hear you. Thank you. Supervisor Koenig, I'd like to respond to part of your question. Um, in terms of the debris cleanup, uh, I believe there are about mm -hmm. 70 parcels fully cleaned up. Uh, it doesn't show on the dashboard because they're awaiting some soil testing results to confirm that final cleanup. Uh, in addition, there are uh, about seven teams still actively cleaning up the other parcels. Uh, there are a little more than 900 in total. Uh, most have signed up with either the public option or the private option to do the debris removal. I think uh, we're only short about 30 or 40 parcels that really aren't signed up for any option and we're having to pursue those individually. Uh, so we're making good progress. It's still a long road ahead of us. Cal OES is leading this charge with their contractor Anvil out of, uh, out of the San Francisco area. Um, and so I think that tries to answer some of your question. Um, I can answer more if you have additional thoughts on this topic. From me, thank you. Uh, super, that's it. Okay, Supervisor Friend, do you have any questions? I uh, know, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, Supervisor Coonerty. No, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and Supervisor Caput. Yes. Uh, the only uh, comment I'll make is I. There are a few uh, RVs still out at the fairgrounds uh, here in South County, and. Uh, 
I don't know if, uh, you know, how long they can stay or, or whatever, but uh, is there any comment on that, on the RVs? Uh, they have electrical and water hookups there at the fairgrounds. Anybody have any information on that? I don't know. Yeah, we, okay. we can get you that information offline. I don't have any uh, right now about the, I know there, there are still a few people that are displaced that are living at the, in their RVs and we can get that information to you about the specifics. That'll be fine, yeah. And I, I the one, uh, uh, the two uh, families that I talked to, they said they're in that uh, 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 supervisor, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Kunitis, uh district, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe I'll ask the clerk of the board, uh, do you have, uh, for public comment, uh, do you have anybody that just uh, wants to speak on this issue? We currently have one person that has their hand up. Okay, I think... Uh, is there any need to just, why don't you repeat the uh, the numbers again, just, just the numbers for people want to call in? Yes, and I can go ahead and share my screen one more time that has all that information on it. So as you can see at the top of the screen there, the telephone number to call in if you wish to call in is one six six nine. Nine zero zero six eight three three. The webinar ID is eight three seven one 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 two nine two four five. Okay. Uh, I, I apologize. Somebody's correcting me. The webinar ID is eight three seven one 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 two nine two four two, not four five. So it's forty. It ends in forty two. Okay, 9242. Yes. Okay, we will uh, allow each speaker two minutes to speak. They would, please. Okay, thank you. Um, Chair, would you like me to leave this slide up or would you like me to bring this um, timer up? I'll bring the timer up. Please. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaker whose telephone number ends in 2915. You have two minutes to speak. I am unmuting you. Please accept the unmute by dialing star six and start speaking. When you start, the timer will start. Hello, this is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Thank you. Um, good morning and welcome to Supervisor Koenig. It's, it's a real pleasure to welcome you to the board and uh, also to welcome you, Supervisor uh, McPherson, as chairman. I want to first comment that it has not been easy to find this access information for the public. And I hope that your board will include uh, public computers in the lobby somewhere in the county building for people to use because all of the public libraries are closed and many people do not have computer access. Um, so as we proceed and there are, are staff presentations, it will be um, pretty important to make that available to the public. I have some questions. First of all, I too have gone um, to the fairgrounds to observe what's going on there. There are a number of people, evacuees from the CZU fire still staying there they are all being charged $900 a month to stay there. And I find that appalling at a time when we're giving free places for um, many people in our community to stay to shelter in place for COVID, that um, these fire evacuees are having to pay $900 a month. Some of them have not been successful at navigating the FEMA process and are having to come up with that money out of their own pocket. When I talked with them, some of them didn't know if they would be able to make the next month's payment and would be out on the streets. So I really think we've got to do something about this. I don't understand why the county would not renovate 
the site in Watsonville on Freedom Boulevard and Crestview, wherein the um, 1989 earthquake damaged home, um, home owners. Their homes were damaged. Some of them were due. Um, there were many FEMA trailers that were brought in there, and people were able to stay. Okay. Uh, telephone caller whose telephone ends in 1999. I am unmuting you when you accept the unmute. Please speak, and the timer will start when you start. Good morning. My name is James Ewing Whitman. I appreciate Becky Steinberger's comments. And, you know, during the public comment, I think I might have something that would be humorous, but now we're talking about the CZSU fires. Um, I spoke on September 15th, 2020 about the CZSU fires. And I'm just kind of curious where if everybody's getting their insurance validated because um, Lloyd's of London doesn't cover damages from wireless. And I'm going to make another note to a CNN 1985 report about wireless weapons directly about lightning and that 60 gigahertz is a military weapon. Um, so I don't think that's very funny, but it's something that needs to be discussed and thought about. That's enough for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Monica McGuire. I am please accept the unmute. When you start speaking, the timer for two minutes will begin. So I'm choosing, I hope you can hear me. I'm choosing unmute and it's popping back up that I have to choose. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah. I can hear you. And just I'm saying all that just so you know that could be happening to other people as well. Thank you. Um, again, brand new year. It just would be incredible to have the change that you respond to the public this time this year. Um, Becky Steinbrenner brought up that point over a month ago, I know, um, about the fairgrounds. And it's shocking that there was a report that no one's at the fairgrounds that has been closed down. And that we all know Becky is incredibly good researching. She gets out and does things personally. So please respond to whether this is happening um, on a level that you have some control over or, or why people are being charged $900 a month to stay there. And then we're told that it's all closed down. H having brought these things up, so like so many others with no response for so long, um, we really would like the new year to have this change bring about actual response to how, why is that happening? How is that happening? Why is it misrepresented? And what else will happen about it at this point? Because that is unconscionable that people would be charged $900 a month to stay there. Uh, the fact that it happened at all before, again, please confirm, please respond, please let us know. Please be transparent. Please, uh, I keep noticing that Mr. Friend's video goes away, uh, just like all last year. We never saw his face. He didn't show up in video at any of the meetings. Um, you know, if you're not going to show up in person, at least show up where we can see what you're doing and, and how you're responding when we speak. That, that is our right as your employers to see and understand everything by asking our questions and getting responses. Thank you so much for hearing me out. The next speaker is Jessica. You have two minutes to speak. I am unmuting you. Please accept the unmute and start speaking. The timer will begin timer will when you begin start. When you yes, hello. My name is Jessica Yala, and I have been attending the meetings, the board meetings at the fairgrounds for the past maybe eight months or so. Um, from my knowledge, there might be about... 17 campers um, from what I could recall they're paying rent um, they're paying about anywhere from 900 to 950 a month depending on the hookup services that they choose many of the evacuees still living there have no idea how they're going to make their rent um, they're very worried they're very tight strapped and I would hope that the county would find a way where they can put in place the MOU 
for those campers so they wouldn't have to pay um, that rent. Um, it's very concerning to see them struggle. And, you know, I just feel that the county should consider doing more than what they're doing um, now. From my knowledge, they started paying rent in either October or November. I can't really recall. But that's a long time to be paying rent when you don't have the money. And um, I know a lot of evacuees left because they did not have the money. Um, so it's just something that I would really like the board to consider. Um, it's extremely important. And when it is said that the evacuees have left, they've not left. They've actually turned into tenants. And, um, you know, so their status title has changed, but the evacuees are still there. Chair, I do not see anybody else with their hand up, so that would be the end of public comment. Okay. Um, we'll bring it back to the board uh, for action or further comments. Any comments from the board members? No comments, but I will uh, move the recommended action. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Friend, a motion by Coonerty. Uh, clerk, uh, better call the roll on all of these now. Uh, uh, Chair, I believe that Supervisor Koenig has some comments still. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask for clarification of um, you know how many people did pay rent uh, last month for space at the county fairgrounds. Do we have some record of that? Um, I mean, let me see if uh, Elisa Benson might be able to answer that question. Yeah. It's also important to note that the county fairgrounds is is not the uh, Santa Cruz County. They're an independent uh, the board state. under the state. Um, but I will ask Elisa to comment. Sure, um, and I have council, our board members, Elisa here, and I apologize, my camera is not cooperating with the Zoom platform right now. Um, Supervisor Koenig, I will have to check in with the fairgrounds manager on the number of tenants there. So as um, one of our um, public commenters mentioned, this is the rent they are paying to utilize an RV hookup at the site. Many of the evacuees who are still there have received individual assistance through FEMA, which is rental assistance, and they're utilizing those dollars for um, that payment. I am not sure if all of the folks who are at that site were um, qualified and received FEMA assistance, and they may be some of the folks who are who are having more of a challenge. With individual assistance for rental assistance, it is not a lump sum, it is re-evaluated by FEMA on a regular basis. So that may be introducing some of that uncertainty some of our evacuees are feeling. As I mentioned in, in providing a little bit of context around the recovery services that are coming online, um, we do have FEMA funded case work, which is to work with each survivor approved um, under the federal declaration uh, for not just our um, fire survivors, but it's across the state. Um, Catholic Charities is the award winner for that for the state, and they are trying to actually get their operation up and running. Unfortunately, there's a lag between when that happens and when you get that casework support out to survivors, and we're looking towards February for that. Um, so in terms of, again, that rent that folks are paying is that standard RV hookup that the fairground charges. Um, our program, as what I was speaking to, is the county-run program did close, uh, gosh, I want to say mid-December, um, and that's part of partially after three extensions of that program with FEMA. Typically, shelter programs close within 30 days of the event. So I just wanted to, to put that out there. And I'm happy to research any additional questions around that. Okay, uh, Ms. Benson, this is uh, Supervisor McPherson. Um, yeah, how about the, the um, involvement of the state agency in, in the fairgrounds? Does that complicate the issue? Um, I mean, it's not a direct uh, line to the county, is it? Is it, it, it yeah, it does complicate the issue. I mean, as um, the fairground board sets their rates, and and so we don't have a role in that regard. Um, and you know, I will also say the fairground has been impacted 
significantly by the pandemic and by the fire. So, you know, they are trying to, to manage their own affairs, but um, we are, you know, we do work with the fairground manager and the board. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, those are converse, that's those decisions around cost for their sites are um, of, the, of the county fairground board. Okay, if we wanted to get an update then about how we're going to, how we might address this in a different way or would we have to wait till February, according to what you're saying? No, we can look into it before that, um, Chair McPherson, to just address how many people are there, what's the level of, um, well, I'll call it sort of rental insecurity, given sort of, as I mentioned, that FEMA individual assistance is reevaluating on a reoccurring um, basis. But we can actually get a, more of a status of what's going on there prior to February um, and see if there's any short, shorter term supports we can offer. Okay, can you, do you think we might be able to have something, uh, an update on that next week at our regular meeting? I'm happy to start those questions today and we can, we'll bring whatever information we're able to get back on next okay. Tuesday. Thank you, okay. Any other questions from the board? Um, we do have a motion, I, who seconded that? Did somebody, I didn't see a second. Yes, uh, Supervisor Friend, second it. And Excuse me, okay. Uh, uh, please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. And Chair McPherson? Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. Uh, the, the last item on today's agenda is the closed session. Uh, I will ask the uh, County Council, uh, will there be any reportable items, and then I'm going to ask if there's any public comment. Are there any reportable items, Mr. Council? There are no reportable items. Okay. Uh, are there any comments from the public on the scheduled uh, closed session item we have? Yes, we do. If you give me one second, I mean, is it how long would you like them to speak for public uh, two, comment? Two minutes. Okay, great. Thank you. One second, please. My, uh, okay. I'm not going to bring up the timer for some reason. It's not wanting to come up. So speaker whose telephone number ends in 2915, you have two minutes to speak. When you are unmuted, when you start speaking, the timer will begin. Hello, this is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, First of all, I would like to ask that in future meetings, the public be given three minutes instead of two, unless there is a very complicated and long agenda. I would like to speak to this closed session um, item, the threat to public uh, properties. I am assuming that is in, in the event of debris flows, and I hope that the county is able to hire on extra um, public works maintenance workers to remove log jams and, and debris that could uh, uh, clog culverts and thereby damage roadways and bridges. And I ask that the members of the public be um, informed about this and also that um, people be allowed to go out and manage their own properties and preserve these. Um, county-owned facilities so that the property owners also are able to maintain access to their properties throughout the winter. Thank you very much. Uh, me, usually I don't respond, but I th do think under the circumstances with so much work having been done by our county staff through Public Works, uh, in particular with Mr. Machado, uh, I don't know how many hours and how many people have been working at this along with state and federal agencies. Can you just give a brief comment of what you've been doing? Uh, I, this is a little unusual, I know, but I think under the circumstances, uh, I think the public should be assured that we have been doing, uh, really working literally night and day to try to clear that, uh, clear it up to the best of our abilities. Uh, Mr. Machado, could you make a few comments, please? Sure, thank you, Chair McPherson. Uh, so just quickly, we did uh, hire 
a number of contractors to help us with that uh, from a staffing perspective. And so we do have those resources at our disposal and uh, we're monitoring each storm and each event to ensure that those culverts stay as open as possible and that the soils also stay clear. And so um, I think we're in a good shape. Um, we've actually had a, you know, it's been a light winter as everybody knows. And so uh, we're ready for the next event. And uh, after that event, we'll get ready for the next one. And if need be, we will pull those contractors back in to provide the resources needed to keep the roads clear and the culverts clear. And so uh, I think we're in, in good shape right now and we're thankful for the light winter. Thank you, Chair. Very good. Yeah. Th uh, good question. And thank you for your answer, your update on what we're doing and continuing to do. Uh, any other uh, public comments on the uh, closed session item? Yes, we do. The next speaker is Monica McGuire. You are being unmuted. When you start speaking, the timer will start. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Um, so I'm wanting again to speak for the public on, on this detail of what Mr. McPherson just said that he usually doesn't comment like this. He usually doesn't bring something back up if the public brings something to their to your attention through these meetings. I, I'm certain that I'm not alone in not understanding how the public is supposed to get responses from you if it's not through these meetings. And when we speak and we don't have responses in the past, it's been so frustrating. So hooray that you're responding today and that Manu very specifically um, responded to us earlier as we were asking questions is just the most beautiful start again to feeling like we're heard and that our voice and questions and needs matter when we take the time to show up to these meetings. Um, Basically, what I what I want to refer to as well is when there's uh, the continual issue of looking at the way the agendas are written and how we have to pour through hundreds to sometimes thousands of pages in order to understand what we can. And it's difficult to understand when we ask these questions at the meetings, it's really important that you do respond to us and give us answers because it's very complicated and as a writer and editor myself, it doesn't look like it needs to be quite that complicated to uh, help us understand what an agenda item is about and how to go about asking questions on behalf of other uh, residents and people who live in this county who are not showing up. Um, and I know a lot of people who just feel so disappointed and disillusioned in the past, that's why they don't. But again, this new era, let's let's just please keep responding to us as you just did and, um, and use the Brown Act appropriately. So thank you for hearing that out and please keep listening to Becky Steinbrenner. Our next speaker is Mary Lou Sams Wiley. You are being unmuted. Please accept the unmute and start speaking. The timer will begin when you start. Good morning. Yes, I'd like to remind people, encourage people, county and also homeowners and stuff to throw out winter right. Ask a farmer re-nitrify your soil, the roots will grow um, despite, you don't need to do anything to it, just throw it, water it with the rains, it'll, it will grow and the roots will help hold the soil in place. It will, the uh, local critters won't eat it, which is a plus. If you wanna feed the animals, put out their feed if you wish, but um, it will not regrow unless it's in a marshy area. You may get one or two uh, seeds that will, um, grow again, but it will die out. And so it will be, um, when it dries out, the leftover will um, go back and provide mulch for the soil and such, but it will help prevent some of the soil loss. I did it for mine after the 08 tr uh, trading fire when they wanted me to plant um, barley and a bunch of other stuff. And I told the guys that I'm not fertilizing. And when he came out and saw my waves of green just blowing and such, he was, very amazed and I said no that's winter rye that anemic yellow stuff over there that little patch that is your your barley and so you have to ask farmers how do you keep your soil from eroding how do you get it uh, to be a healthier soil to be uh, renitrified in the root system um, helping out um, keeping the soil in place so again it's if it, there's you have to order it online the local um, 
feed stores are not stocking it, unfortunately. And then also use, please, for heaven's sakes, use rice straw, not regular straw. Regular straw from um, has a lot of seeds in it, whereas the rice straw doesn't. So you won't have any invasive weeds and such. I did use, unfortunately, a little bit of the um, regular straw, and I got... Um, Chair, and that is it for public comment. Okay. All right. Uh, then we will uh, move into closed session, and there will be no reportable items. Next board meeting will be uh, week Tuesday at nine o'clock on January twelfth. Uh, this this meeting is adjourned uh, into our special session. Uh, thank you, and uh, uh, great start to two thousand twenty-one, everyone. All right, we'll see the board. Let's uh, about five minutes. We'll, we'll re, um, reassemble for our closed session. Thank you. Meetings adjourned.